Okay. Good afternoon, Reunion, uh, and welcome to this presentation. Uh, Air Scouts, be prepared to rise above your expectations. Hopefully, we'll be able to dispel a few myths about uh, UK air scouting. My name's Clint Marler, and I'm the UK air scouting specialist. We are Air Scouts. Here, here's a picture from 2016 of our National Air Scouting Camp to mark the uh, 75th anniversary of air scouting, which started in 1941. What are Air Scouts? We are Scouts who just love aviation and we have done for a very long time. Scouts have always loved aviation and you see some photos here from uh, I believe it's 1908, 1909. So you see some Scouts and a a very small scout or a cub there. So from the very start of aviation, scouts have been involved. A few facts then. Did you know there is not an air scout group in every county? So we do make our scouts travel to join an air scout group. Um, I think from Liverpool upwards, we've only got three air scout groups. So we're very um, underrepresented in Scotland, the north of England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Air Scouts can apply for grants from Gilwell to assist with aviation costs. Uh, this is called the WT Taylor grant. You can have an Air Scout section or just a patrol within an existing group so you don't have to become a whole group of Air Scouts, you can just do it a bit at a time. The Air Scout Specialist Advisor can help with aviation providers and resources in your area and that's me. Why not? How about having an an air section or an air patrol in your section or a mixed land air and sea explorer unit so you could have all the different colors all in one group. why not try something different air scouting is an opportunity to grow your group there are kids all over the country who love aviation who would love to do it with scouting so why not at your group well we are international too there are scouts in many many countries and here's a few symbols at the bottom of your screen uh, from uh, Australia, New Zealand, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Right now let's start dispelling the air scouting myths. As you see on the left here, uh, the usual ones, it costs too much, it's elitist, it's too military, uh, it needs leaders with aviation experience, uh, there's no support available, STEM is hard. We'll explain what STEM is in a minute. The girls won't like it and it's not proper scouting is it okay costs air activities do not have to be expensive there are grants from hq and various local organizations will give grants to young people local flying and gliding clubs want new members and will give cheaper taster sessions uh, for younger people scouting aviation providers in cambridge and kent have their own aircraft as you can see in the above picture why not look them up and book them up hovercraft experiences micro lighting experiences parasending they all want young people to do them visits to air museum can be done on a budget or free just keep an eye on the uh, facebook site and we'll let you know how and as with all scouting activities if you want something bad enough do a bit of fundraising so you can afford it Elitist. Air activities are just like any other scouting activity. Flying in STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics, uh, activities are available to all scouts, including those less able. Also, it's led by people from all walks of life. How many scouts, for instance, have a drone or make paper airplanes? Most of them. Are they elitist? No, they're just using STEM to do things that they enjoy. Is it elitist to do something you really enjoy? I don't think so. Too military. We are scouts and proud. We don't do drill. We don't march. We're not trying to be tin soldiers. We do wear our uniform with pride as per POR and take pride in looking smart when visiting other venues. Air Scouting uses a range of aviation and STEM suppliers, 99% of which are a civilian. Gliding clubs, airline education services, hovercraft experiences, um, the Air League, British Gliding Association and the 
Light Aircraft Association, to name just a few. While scouts may love military aircraft, they love all aircraft, from paper planes to becoming pilots, we can support them. We do train our scouts to react quickly when asked to do something. This is safety first when you're on a live airfield. We do train our scouts in marshalling skills, so we also make sure they can do hand signals, um, which is important when you're wearing uh, ear protection and on a busy airfield. Do the leaders need expert knowledge? Air scouts are scouts. We just do extra aviation activities and STEM on the side. Leaders do not need to be aviation or STEM experts. Many files, videos, resources are available to help leaders online. Uh, check the new badge resources at, at scouts.org.uk. Um, there's loads of stuff on there. Um, I'm your dedicated Air Scout specialist and I can help you with your programme, um, tell you how to do Zoom meetings, etc. And there's the contact email address there. We also have a dedicated Facebook site which uh, is UK Air Scouting and that obviously links in with myself. So if there's something you need to, to know, I can contact headquarters and clarify any points. Going on to support, there's plenty of support out there uh, if you know where to look and I can help you with this. Many organisations are happy to help, including the Light Aircraft Association, which is a UK wide body. They also help do a, a build a plane um, project. They do a youth education programme. They have art competitions for all scouts. Um, they organise visits to local airfields and also offer cheaper flying opportunities and support. We have STEM ambassadors from both the civilian and military organisations around the UK, including the Ministry of Transport, the RAF and civilian uh, aviation providers. Uh, there's the RAF Youth Engagement Team and they do fantastic work across the whole of the UK um, with STEM visits tailored to your needs and they'll come to your jamboree, they'll come to uh, larger gatherings, um, especially at places like Gilwell. Um, and they're always happy to give you support. There's a British Gliding Association, support and help with anything to do with gliding. The Air League, which is a uh, national body, uh, they also run a build a plane project and support uh, national youth aviation activities at parliamentary level. There's a group called Metal Seagulls, they build their own planes. Um, and they do lots and lots of STEM activities and they're happy to visit your um, visit your group or even come to a Zoom meeting with you to explain what they do. More support. Where do you ask for support? Well, you can ask your local airfields and airports. Uh, aerospace companies are always willing to help youth. Uh, hover, hovercraft experience providers. The RAF Charitable Trust supports all of our aviation badges in, in scouting. Uh, including the air activity stage one to six. Um, these are the guys that run the uh, Royal International Air to two. Uh, There's a, a group called Wanna Fly Aviation uh, and they support microlighting across the UK and are very um, keen to help uh, scouts fly. And many more, and there's a few um, motifs down there like Rolls Royce, Royal Navy, UK space agencies. There's plenty more to look for. Okay. Right, okay, that's, that's my section done. I'm now going to hand over to Jerome, who's going to talk you through, through things uh, all about flying and STEM. Over to you, Jerome. Thank you very much, Clint. So, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Jerome Semichon. I'm uh, the Explorer Scout Leader for Endeavour in North Wiltshire. I run a mixed unit of air and land explorers. Um, so we mostly do everything as a unit, but every so often we split and some go and do more um, air biased activities, whereas the others do um, more land biased activities. So STEM activities are hard. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. No, they're not. Uh, yes, you probably associate that with rocket science, but it's not just about rocket science. In fact, you could build rockets. You can see uh, pictures of a scout troop that achieved the uh, final of the UK Youth Amateur Rocket Competition for uh, a few years running. 
it's possible and it's great fun. But it's also tethered tea light hot air balloon, it's paper plane, it's water rocket, it's kite, compass coding. These are all STEM activities and they're part of many of your badges for all sections from beavers to explorers. Very accessible, a lot of fun. More importantly is the sense of achievement it brings to, to our young people when they, um, when they succeed at, or just take part. And if you don't know what, how to do something, there is a STEM network that you can rely, you can ask for help. It's a STEM ambassador network. It's run, it's run nationally and it's very easy to do. You register your organization and you request people, uh, resources, and volunteers will pick up. All of these, the, the volunteers are DBS checked and they will come and help you if they can. So this was a short video about a project some of our explorers have undertaken over the last year, uh, converting an old glider airframe that was lying at the back of a, of a hangar and turning it into two independent um, glider simulators using virtual reality. A fantastic achievement made possible by uh, donations, donations for, and grants, grants from our local council, grants from the WT Taylor Fund. Then we can't touch the straps. Yep, mine are looking good. Tight and tight secure. Good, yep. Yep, can yep. it be? Mine's closing up, please. Alright, that's good. So, where's my roots? There you go, nice. Right, that's good. Good. Oh, I got 1600 feet down, so. You're going to win. I'm doing 8 feet up. Wait, how high are you? Uh, almost 3500. What? I've got plus 7. Oh, man. I'm at 2100 going down. <laughs> uh, plus 8. Oh, no. This isn't bad. Wait, which one's Aston Dan? Uh, the one I'm at. Is it? No. No, it is. There's the old runway. Oh, I'm out. I'm, I'm in the real world. Yeah. And you can see some other activities on, on, this, on this slide. You know, you have um, the foam uh, airplanes that were um, part of the RAF 100 uh, celebration activities provided two hours of great fun for all sorts of sections from beavers to explorers indeed. Um, our, our other explorers have built quadcopters, has required a bit of an investment but that's no different from having to purchase rifles or um, archery equipment, for example. Um, we even had our local police UAV team turn up and, and very interested in what they had done and comparing the, their approach to the commercial drones that they use. Um, a very, very um, positive experience for everybody and accessible to everyone.
So another myth about um, air scouting is that girls won't like it. It's nothing could be further from the truth. Everyone enjoys air activities and just takes part. But these are absolutely activities for everyone. On International Women's Day, the 8th of March, 2020, the Department for Transport joined aviation ambassadors and the Blades aerobatic team at a special event to inspire young girls into a career within aviation. Kirsty Murphy, Liz Sparrow and Kate McWilliams were appointed as aviation ambassadors by the department in 2019 to champion diversity and promote role models in the industry. They, alongside eight others, support the government's Reach for the Sky program which aims to make aviation more diverse, inclusive and accessible to all, as pilot Kirsty Murphy explains. I'm Blade 2 with the Blade Aerobatic Team and I was asked to be an aviation ambassador for the Department for Transport. I was really lucky that my father was in the Air Force, so I grew up around the Air Force and for me it was a really obvious choice that I could be a pilot. I never really thought that I couldn't be a pilot at all. Um, and I think it's really important to make aviation more accessible to young people. And I feel that being an aviation ambassador really gives me an opportunity to do that by getting out there and, and getting uh, my job known a bit more. I'm really proud to be part of the Government's Reach for the Sky programme. Um, it's really important that we uh, broaden diversity within the avi aviation sector. And that's why events like today are so important to show uh, young children, both boys and girls, that uh, anything is achievable and uh, that aviation is a really great sector to be part of. I think one of the nice things about aviation as a, as a sector is that actually it's got the complete span of uh, careers. Uh, you can be a pilot, you can be an engineer, you can be a manager, you can be involved in the ground staff, you can be involved in all the supporting roles. And so my advice to, to anybody who thinks, well, I'm not sure aviation's for me, is it certainly is. Uh, it'll be huge fun, it's really varied and uh, just just go for it and if you're a young girl thinking yeah but girls don't do this you're absolutely wrong girls do and they have fun doing it it's really important for women to be to get into aviation to stop all the stereotypes i've tried it before i've actually sat in the tower and talked to the aircraft and i absolutely loved it there's lots of different ways of getting into aviation and of course aviation is such a, a broad um, industry so it's very easy to look at the pilot and think oh how do I get to be a pilot and there's obviously lots of different routes into that but there's way more jobs behind that so there's engineers there's air traffickers there's support teams um, so really if you want to get into aviation you've just got to find what it is about aviation that you find the most interesting I was brought up around the Air Force so it was very accessible to me so I think the best thing is it's to try and get to know people who are in aviation and spend time around it if you can so you've got a local airfield like we have air scouts here and they come and visit us and we'll always talk to them and show them around the aircraft and it just gives them that sort of it's a really tangible thing it's something that gets that little bit closer to them i wanted to spread awareness around my school about how women have done great things that only, like people think only men can do it's not proper scouting well we burn marshmallows we cook on open fires, in kitchens. We work on the same badges that most of you do, with the addition of some of the air badges maybe, but they're open to everybody. You don't have to be an air section to work on air activities stage one, two, three, four, five, six. You can, everybody can. It's the same scouting. Yep, we do first aid, we do pioneering, we do water activities, and um, we do parasending as well.
So obviously, as you've seen in the video there, um, that, that included a bit of aerobatics. Not everyone is going to do aerobatics, absolutely. And this definitely is for experienced flyers, as we had an example there with one of our uh, former explorers. Um, a bit of a case study. Back in 2013, a bunch of young scouts had a hangar tour on an airfield in Wiltshire, a really cold winter morning. And no real sign of interest in aviation at all. But they really loved it. So they heard about the RAF Benevolent Fund and decided to raise money for the fund. They raised a reasonable amount of money and the gliding club said, okay, thank you. That was unexpected. You know, we'll take you up for a flight for free because you've raised money, which was really nice. Some of them came back, helped with a gliding competition. They were a bit too young to fly. They didn't know how to fly. So they helped on the ground and they moved gliders all day and everything else that is involved in helping run a, a gliding competition. And at the end of the day, they went up for a 45 minutes free powered flight. That was one really nice reward. Well, the problem is that those scouts became hooked. And they came back on airfields day in, weekend in, weekend out. So, so after several years of um, flying, learning, um, this little gentleman flew his first solo flight in, on a bright spring morning in, 20, in 2019. And that actually was the completion of his Duke of Edinburgh Award gold section, uh, skill section objective, and actually the completion of his section. It was a big achievement for him. It was also a big achievement for one of his friends who had been on a similar learning curve for, than, than him for well, almost the same amount of time. A lot of their glider launches were subsidized or paid for by uh, grants. Grants from the W.T. Taylor Fund for Air Scouting, currently suspended, but will resume when face-to-face -face scouting resumes, from local charitable organizations or even from national charitable organizations. The problem with all that is they like going up, but you never quite know how they're going to come down. Perfect, look up, go! Go, go. good, yeah, good. Another one? Yeah, yeah. yeah was... Honest? Yeah, no, yeah, Another one? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the only bad bit is like getting out of the plane. Well, he's sort of looking down, isn't it? You're like, yeah, yeah. Ah. But you don't have to look down, you have to look him in the face. Yeah, when well, he said that, he was like, look at me. <laughs> And that's it from us really. Uh, we're here, we're happy to help you. Um, as Clint mentioned earlier, he is available. You've got his email address, air.scouts at scouts.org.uk. You have the address of the UK Air Scouting Facebook, uh, Facebook group. Um, many of us are on there, not just from the UK actually. And it's actually a great place for all sorts of information, um, whether you're an Air Scout group or just a normal section wanting to do our activities as well. Thank you very much. And yes, we will. Um, as Jerome said there, we're always available, available to give you uh, help, whether it's uh, on POR, whether it's on how to run air activities, or if you want to become uh, an air scout group or a troop or even a patrol. Um, we just need to make sure that our scouts have the opportunity to do these activities um, and hopefully um, get a few more groups in the north of the UK. Thank you very much, Jerome, and everybody, enjoy reunion. Thank you. Bye-bye.